hour three time on Monday, and that means it's time to get together with Dana Dernford and Yuichi Shimatsu and bring you up to date on Fukushima, on radiation, on all kinds of uh, horrors that are going on, unbeknownst to the great majority of people because the mainstream media just doesn't report on the dangers and the deaths caused by peaceful nuclear power plants, so-called. Uh, big, big problem. Let's find out. Uh, are you there, Yoshi? Yeah, I'm still in Southern California. Uh, you know, it's been a bit of a hiatus for me from my usual Asia-based Fukushima work. But, you know, Fukushima is over here in the West Coast, too, obviously. I, oh, it, it follows story. you coast to coast. Yeah, uh, on the ocean, <laughs> yeah, on, on the seafront over here. And um, just took a walk, I think it was a day and a half ago, two days ago, and then uh, by the shore again, and tide pool is completely dead. A lot of the uh, shells now have like a kind of green algae growing inside of them. It's been so oh, really? long. Oh. Yeah, the kill-off has been, uh, there's no new, there's no new uh, fresh shells, all the shells. No regeneration, old. none. No. There's no, no, I mean, everything is basically dead, and uh, there's just housing for there are fewer hermit crabs, even they're dying out. And then, and where's so where's our uh, where's our great uh, ocean oceanography and uh, university uh, science community down there looking at the shoreline and reporting on this catastrophe? <laughs> No one in sight. And, uh, you know, what do they do with the carcasses of these things? I was, it was funny. I decided to walk along the cliffs on saw a ravine, saw a bunch of crows congregating there, and you have a distinct whiff of rotten uh-huh. mammal flesh. So I assume uh-huh. they're just tossing the sea lion bodies into some sort of ditches down there, and they're rotting away. Could be. So there's a literal, I said there's a little cover, literal cover up going on in the beaches. You know? Yeah. All right. Let's uh, go up to uh, BC and, and see if Dana Dernford is there. Are you there, Dana? I am. Thank you, folks. Hi. Yeah. No, it's Welcome. a horrendous story, Yoshi. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, Yoshi, uh, I guess you, you've withdrawn your offer to buy that uh, beachfront condominium in Santa Monica now? <laughs> well, actually, I, was, I, I uh, actually stayed at one uh, when I first came to college. When I left Japan, I came to college in the Midwest, and I uh-huh. actually did a bit of surfing in Santa Monica. Times have greatly changed since then. Yeah, I mean, I never expected to see what I've been oh, seeing no. now, you know, oh, this no. kill off along the coast. Uh, or really at that time was uh, prior to, you know, it was a long time ago, the development of nuclear power plants in California. And yeah. Now we just had the gubernatorial, the governor's order, and PG&E to shut down um, Diablo Canyon. That's the last major uh, civilian nuclear power plant in California. But um, they're going to take their know, time, uh, but at least it's, it's supposedly going to be 2025. That's yeah. when they both hit 40 years of age. They were built in 1985, so we're going to uh, take them out to the maximum lifetime. Yeah. And PG and E uh, want to shut them down because they realize, it, you know, to, to fix these plants would cost far more than the original cut construction price. It costs, you know, three, yeah. four times yeah. as much to get them in any kind of working condition. So they did the smart thing. They said, they, you know, they would prefer renewable energies conservation. So they're, they're real sure that in the next 10 years there will be no major earthquake to uh, bother uh, the well, uh, well, that, serene that, setting that, of that Diablo that Canyon. <laughs> massive problem because Diablo Canyon is not too far from the San Andreas That's Fault. That's right. Where the fault is buckling, you know, where the fall on the Bakersfield side, Bakersfield inland, massive yeah. agricultural ranching, mining area out there. Uh, that part is rising, but Diablo Canyon, that part, you know, closer to the shore where basically the fault runs into the ocean, right, uh, uh, around Santa Cruz. It That's goes right. The ocean. Yeah. yeah, it's sinking, but the seismologists are predicting that when the fault ruptures, when all these pressures, you know, finally release, that that side, the seaward side, is going to spring back up a couple of feet. And so you've got these two nuclear reactors sort of like the man on the springboard, okay, at the end of the springboard. Uh, there is going to be not only because of these plants, and then when the San Andreas, you know, unleashes, this thing is there. You know, really crazy situation. So my assumption is, you know, PG&E probably is going to shut this thing down earlier. I, uh, you know, they can't afford two reactors 
you know, basically exploding like Fukushima. That would be there in the middle of California. That would be their ultimate nightmare, right? Uh, a specific gas and electric for That's people right. who don't know. The That's utility. Right. Yeah. They cannot afford a Fukushima in the middle of California. They know that. So I think 2025 is only to appease maybe some of their investors and executives, you know, support. Well, them. it'll be interesting. Uh Crazy California becomes the first major state to rid itself of all uh, nuclear power plants, at least public nuclear yeah, power plants. Yeah, and then the crazy thing about California now is there's been this whole movement pro-nuclear. It's called Save Diablo Canyon. Oh, come okay? on. You they kidding. had a street protest in San Francisco, a small march, and they wrote a letter to the governor in uh, earlier this year. Then I did some research. I said, who would do And they claim to be uh, uh, the most progressive environmentalists. They call themselves Echo, like Echo. Yeah, Echo. Yeah, Echo Modernism. I call them egomaniacs or ego, yeah. That's um, crazy. Um, yeah, egomaniacs are crazy. Yeah. But as I did research onto this group, there's several of them involved. Uh, one in Oakland that's related to a major PR firm. I'll, I think I'll write an article on this, expose them, uh, based on our discussion with Dana last week that we need to show who these people are. I found out that the big funder behind it is a, a woman, very rich woman, called uh, Rebecca Pritzker. You know, Pritzker owns the Hyatt Hotel Group. Pritzker. A billionaire family. One of the richest families. And, yeah, they do the Pritzker Award. Sure. They're one of the richest for architecture. They're one of the richest. Uh, they're based in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that her sister, Penny Pritzker, is, is Obama's Secretary of Commerce. Penny Pritzker is the Secretary of Commerce. She was the main uh, funder for the Obama campaign. She ran his war chest when he ran for president. Too funny. Uh, the Pritzker. They're based in Chicago. Mm-hmm. More, more Chicago uh, inbred uh, crime family activity. Testing house. Too. Yeah. The Kiev. Yeah. You're breaking up on your phone there for some reason. Maybe if you're on a cell, oh, okay. turn turn to a yeah. different direction. Maybe we'll get okay. a cl yeah. clearer signal. Well, it turns out uh, Penny Prisker, uh, the sister of this pro-nuclear, you know, she's a big funder of pro-nuclear advocacy now. Yeah. She led the delegation to Kiev, Ukraine last year, where Westinghouse is trying to build the probably the world's largest number of reactors for a new plant and also the world's biggest nuclear repository near Odessa. You know, so uh, these people are up to their gills in nuclear. And, and uh, Rebecca Prisker, who's like running all the PR thing, she runs Soros' media operation, Media Matters. Oh, really? And she's with yeah, the Democracy ah. Exchange. She was the founder of that. Mm -hmm. And she's the founder of this eco uh, uh, modernist, eco modernist. And she's uh, very much in there with Warren Buffett and also Bill Gates. You know, Bill Gates is running that small uh, he's, he's trying to build small nuclear reactors, and she's yeah. an avid supporter of thorium reactors and reactors that use salt, molten salt, you know, new generation of smaller reactors. So it's it's uh, real weird that the Chicago, we're beginning to see why Obama never did anything about Fukushima, the Chicago uh, mob. And I, and I say mafia, I don't mean it, uh, you know, uh, figurative. It is truly, it goes back to uh, the big boss of Chicago, Henry um, What's his name? Henry Crown. You know, he's a, uh, he founded the company that became General Dynamics. He was you really are amazing in your research. Well, you're I guess you live in yeah. Chicago. You remember I worked at U.S. Steel in South Chicago. That's right. So I know That's the, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know this. I know the Democratic Party very well. You know, unfortunately, on the other side of the barricades from them. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, this is like really uh, Obama, Clinton, Territory and the Crown family, you know, uh, they they were and because they were worse and well, you're breaking up again. Yeah, so this whole group of Jewish financiers, very strong in Chicago, have a mm -hmm. lock mm -hmm. and strong in the Democratic Party and the very core of it right, right now of uh, right. Uh, what's backing Hillary. So nuclear power. Very much. And then we remember, it's not just civilian nuclear. General Dynamics 
They build uh, nuclear submarines, the electric boat. Oh, yeah. This is a Military industrial Polaris complex, big time. Yeah, the Tomahawk cruise missile and all that. You know, we're talking about nuclear warheads here. You can't see launched nuclear warheads. Yeah. They're really shoddy companies. That are, they were considered by the U.S. Navy the most corrupt and shoddiest com- uh, contractor they ever had, you know, for cutting corners. All Jeez, right. Government. Well, uh, back here uh, yeah. on the home front, uh, Indian Point was due to reopen. Uh, I think it did just reopen. Now it's been shut down again because of a water leak. So I mean, that, that is the most dangerous. See that? Look, we got Hanford on the Columbia, which is leaking yeah. radiation into the Columbia, as everybody knows. Yeah. And we got Indian yeah. Point, which is polluting the gorgeous yeah. uh, Hudson River. Come on. This is yeah. crazy. It's it's crazy. Uh, Dana Durnford, what's going on up there with you? Hi, folks. Yeah, um, Hanford's bad. Uh, I'll just touch on that for a second. Hanford, yeah. 41 miles of open uh, pit, uh, pits. 41 miles of pits. Uh, Since the 1950s, yeah. some of that stuff goes back. Right. They're still there. They're still doing it there. And then there was a couple of billion, I'm um, sorry, 50 something billion gallons dumped directly in the soil. But we talk about uh, the tanks that are there. The <laughs> that's no. This let me that's let me don't, don't leave that subject because that's crucial. Yeah. The way people used to handle this deadly waste was literally to truck it and dump it on the ground, on the soil, and let it just percolate into the ground. This is how exactly. crazy it was in the 1950s. Yeah, and I see we got a leak on Lake Ontario by a nuclear power plant in Canada. And that could be drums they dumped down there years ago in the lake. We noticed mm. I got a whole bunch of documentation on that. Uh-huh. But the uh, Coast Guard is keeping everybody two miles away from uh, the... Sp- they, don't, they don't say it's coming from the plant. They say by the plant. But the Coast Guard won't let anybody within two miles close to the sheen that's on the water. Now, this is the, the Lake Ontario. This is wa- fresh water from oh, my. Quebec and Ontario and yeah. eastern provinces. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stupidest thing imaginable. Uh, you know what? On the water, uh, pretty regularly. Uh, you know, there's a story in the United States of a salt lake that normally gets 7.3 million birds each year. Great, the Great Salt Lake in Utah. Yeah, great. And so they are missing. Uh, oh, 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 whoa, 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 whoa! Seven million? million normally migratory that comes through that lake because there's and they, a lot they of they didn't show up. Well, the lake is shrinking. Yes. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons they're blaming it on, apparently. Uh, but uh, I've, I've been all over the place, and anybody, I haven't seen 7.3 million birds <laughs> in the last five years. But on, on uh, 15,000 miles of coastline, altogether, I think the total would have been around 14,000 birds. There was 7,500, and that one time, that one little spot, which was nothing. You usually see that every uh, mile or so. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, so here I am with, say, 14,000 birds total verified that we physically got pictures of, and uh, they're missing 7.3 million. Now, these are mostly uh, probably seabirds, right? Seagulls. I'm talking about, yeah. Pelicans. Well, there's 300 species. There's lots of them. species, yeah. 330 or so species. And where do they, they migrate through? Where are they coming from? Right. I'm not, I haven't went down that road yet for that yeah. one. I'm just, I'm just something. curious. Okay, if 7 million plus birds are missing from the Great Salt Lake, this should be an environmental front page head, headline story everywhere. Right. They're, they're blaming it on the locals using all the water. Oh, and could, the lake is be, shrinking so much still. that the birds don't go there anymore. Right. The, the snow, they were talking about the other day here in Canada, the snowpack in British Columbia is down to 13%. But what they didn't bother mention was the ice pack is gone. The five thousand the, the glacier, the glaciation, uh, so called ice, ice pack, it's gone. There, there yeah. is none. And then, and then the snow pack, which is seasonal, yeah, yeah, uh, down to thirteen percent. So that's that's dramatic for all the lakes and rivers and estuaries and all the insects and trout and uh, habitat and birds and animals that wow normally live in that one. Um, yeah, and so. It's just so silent out there on the water right now. Shocking. It really- Are you getting any any data, Dana, from the uh, the Alaskan and and BC fisheries? They they must have cut back. They must they have, have a lot of yeah. idle boats, but you never hear about it. I, I've heard talking because uh, you know those yeah, fishermen. That's devastating. Yeah, it's it's but uh, they've kept a good rap on this. 
it's it's surprising because every year you would hear all these stories about everybody fishing normally throughout uh, the last number of decades. Sure. The last couple of years, you don't hear anything. And you like I was on the ocean. I was in the communities. I know uh, a big shrimper uh, fisherman, big, big, big time, a couple of days ago had said that uh, he can't find a shrimp out there. Oh, and now why are we seeing this yeah, on this YouTube? Is why is this is years. this this guy should be in? They're, can they're can gone. you get the guy on the program? Can you get it? Can you get a statement from him? He probably no. doesn't want his name out there. That's the sad yeah, part. Uh, um, just because he sells it for food, right? Of course. He's, he's having uh, mixed emotions about it all. And he said he can't find any shrimp to fish. He just got back uh, like 48 hours ago and said he can't find, uh, could never found a single shrimp yet. He'd never seen anything like it. Not a and single neither did the shrimp. other old timers that, that he knows out to the old salt dogs. Just from all over the coastline, to kind of know each other, to anchor up in the same areas, and yeah. blah blah blah. Yeah, and they're very wealthy people. Yeah, and big fleet, it's big sixty, seventy foot boats, like fleets of them. You know. Okay, yeah, this know, is yeah, a big I'm, operation. I'm group, I don't know, <laughs> wow, wow. Well, I'm out there myself, hunting for anything alive, and you don't see anything jumping. For goodness' sakes, you're not seeing any birds feeding, and I'm just trying to get myself. I'm trying to get myself back up into that mode where I go back on the ocean for one more expedition, but I don't know if I got it in me. <laughs> well, you're not going to find anything, obviously. No, I want. That's why I was. I've got to go have a look. You know, I, I got all that equipment and all the gear and everything sitting there. And if I don't go look, uh, anybody I, could go with you. I got to go look. Sorry. Can you can you get someone to go with you on this trip? Yeah, so you don't have to do it alone. Yeah. yeah, I won't be a long trip. No, I don't have it in me. I'm working on uh, the book and the documentary right now, as hard as I can. But uh, um, you know, it's just one person all by yourself. Oh, I know the story. Yeah, Listen, no I, when you get that doc, <laughs> if you're working on a documentary about what you found with before yeah. and after pictures and all that, this a real it, documentary. It, yeah. Well, we need to, this. Yeah. This needs to be entered in all the film festivals. This, it does, yeah. And that's yeah. why I'm, I'm trying to do everything by that book. You know. Yes. I have authenticating software. I, I got everything done right. Can you get in touch with, uh, try, and, try and reach out to, uh, he's allegedly a big environmentalist, uh, Robert Redford. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I would let him know what you're doing. Uh, tell him this is a film that you want in his festival. Uh, and if he wants yes, to participate uh, yeah. in it, invite him. Maybe I'm he looking. has, maybe he has an interest. Just a thought. Uh, I I'm looking know. for a hero, uh, you know. Like I can only do so much. We can only do so much. Yeah. And, uh, and that's that's the big problem with anything, right? The minute we we all we always see see life that way, where we we're all looking for someone to take charge of them. And Isn't that the are, truth? And you look, look in the mirror, and there's the guy. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. We are we are those people. Can you get uh, get, get you got to get Yoshi in there? Uh, yeah, get him back, on. back. And that's what's happening, yeah. Chuck. Yoshi, okay. and you and me, we don't stop. No, we got to get get him in that documentary of yours. Get him on the yeah, beach I'd love, walking. Yeah, I'd love to get, have at least you guys yeah. in there for sure. And, uh, you know, there's much more in that going in there. But how do you condense it? Like, that's the big problem because I have so much. I have so much material. It was yeah. sick and yeah. unbelievable, <laughs> inconceivable. Well, the, it's the before and after. It, I'm telling you, it's, it's those before and after pictures that are going to yeah. just devastate people. Right. They will not be able to deny it. See, I didn't even come out with that until I got arrested, right? That's what yeah. I thought that. Because yeah. I... I I felt threatened, and I still do, I'm, and I, I am being threatened a lot lately, and I don't know what's going on. Wait, 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 wait. What's, what kind of threats, how are, these, uh, how are these being done? Well, you know, like Telephone? I'm being pinched down on the internet, I'm being pinched down on donations. Oh, I'm sure. I'm nutting, yeah. and then, but yet I'm growing, but I still being pinched down to no movement. But mm -hmm. then I'm getting, uh, I'm getting like calls of people coming up calling me up pretending they're committing suicide and I get the people calling me up uh, saying they're going to come see me and I get I get a lot of emails like that and but I get a lot of messaging on the internet too of, of that kind of stuff but it's it's because I pay attention and I read everything that's sent to me I, and I don't miss very often but I might not get it right away because you know I'm so busy but I, I catch right. up to everything and it's just I can tell that Honestly, there's a huge, massive increase of this kind of information. And TEPCO has come out and admitted now that they covered up the reactors. I, and I was kind of thinking it might have something to do with that. 
I know, Yoshi, the... I'm, I'm, uh, when, I'm getting so many personal threats, I can't understand. Well, it's easy for the... I guess it's the ones you don't hear about that they say you're supposed to worry about the most. It's yeah. these flakes and jerks that call you and, and say we're coming to pay you a visit. Now, they're, 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 first of all, they're cowards. Right here, uh, so... Yeah, of course. And they're, they're paid by the nuclear industry, governments, uh, thugs, punks. I used just, to look for no, yeah, it. Yeah, it's still not fun. So, it, But it is intensifying. It is intensifying. And and these people are contacting people in my own personal world. And it, oh, it's, really? All they, do, all they do is lie, right? They lie constantly. Oh, and so they're trying, to, they're trying to break away your friends and right. your, your community. Yeah. yeah. And and their, their work and I have to answer for all of this. That's why I say. Cause oh, I know it's, it's yeah. too bad. And so yeah. it's, it's reached in every aspect of my life now, permeated every bit of me. Yeah, Yoshi. It's, what they've done well, here yeah. is. Go ahead, Dana. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I was just saying. Jump back to Yoshi there. Uh, they're they're what they're doing is to, Dana's working on a documentary. He's got yeah. so much material. They're they're targeting him for. Yeah. I mean, yeah, grotesque yeah, harassment. This, yeah. this is this is yeah. obvious. There's a new surge in uh, surveillance harassment. And that has to do with, uh, you know, Abenomics not taking off the zero interest or the negative uh, interest rate policy where the Japanese government is given uh, money, is paying Japanese corporations to take away money. And the huh. idea is they're trying to spread uh. their money across the energy sector, nuclear sector, to mining, transport, to shipping, everything. And, uh, you know, they're expanding nuclear power, uh, our nuclear uh, in uh, Canada and Australia, but also in England. You know, uh, they've, they've uh, bought into the Horizon plants there. And so this is really a desperate gambit on their part because they figured, you know, their whole thing he was was at the end is uh, going to remain strong. So it'll be cheap to buy nuclear assets where they're down, get a lock on that and move in. Turn your phone around, uh, Yoshi. Turn your phone yeah. around again. We're going to go, go through the break, Todd. Control. These guys are going for global control over the nuclear industry, and so they hire PR companies like this one that's associated with Pritzker's. Uh, that's called EMC. They're based in uh, uh, Seattle and Oakland. Uh-huh. So uh, they use these very dodgy, secretive corporate research companies to do this work, and they, and they, they're the ones who uh, hire PR companies, little PR companies, agents, to go out there and harass people. Now, the problem with their strategy is Brexit, you know, the British exit from EU, uh, it's really dropped, uh, uh, is basically, uh, uh, investors have put their money in the yen, so the yen is going very much up, whereas the British pound is going down. Now, the Japanese uh, companies, Toshiba, uh, uh, Westinghouse, and uh, Hitachi GE, they bought in new British nuclear power plants, but they'll never get the return now that the pound is down, okay, against a very strong yen. They can't get the return in yen. So they're getting their sort of just desserts right now. Uh, Brexit really uh, clobbered TEPCO, clobbered Hitachi, all the people responsible for Fukushima really got clobbered because their strategy was to go global and not make so much money in Japan, but to build reactors overseas, you know, uh, control uranium. So that's what's happening to Dana right now is that drive to globalize is behind this harassment of nuclear activists everywhere and then the creation of these new kinds of movements to buy off environmentalists who support the eco-modernism uh, movement, you know, these all these uh, shabby little uh, pro-nuclear environmental groups. So, so there is a huge, there's been a huge push, and Brexit just sort of hit them hard. So we're going to see how this works out over the next few months, and I hope uh, they take their huge hit. They have got to stay strong. We all have to stay strong amid this because they're coming to clobber us, but they got sideswiped. Now, Dana, uh, any ramifications uh, in your? Neck of the woods from Brexit. Will Canada be impacted at all by this? Probably not, huh? Yeah. Uh, well, the other countries are planning on pulling out. They even considered having another referendum. And that was that was termed that was termed to be uh, not only bogus and uh, full great. of fraud, but it has no legal standing. None. Hopefully it, not. Yeah. No. no because, but I mean, it's such a close vote, and. No, you're not seeing no effects here. No. All right. I that I, I can. Yeah. Well, your your uh, comments about the shrimp. This is a big company. 
uh, not a shrimp to be found. Your supplier, yeah. Now, I, I would just repeat to all of you out there, don't eat anything that came from the Pacific Ocean. Now, you know, I'm worried about, uh, Yoshi, this may sound small, but there is a, a big growing market in sea salt. Sea salt. And yeah, well, do, we, do we worry about sea salt? Uh, probably, yeah, because uh, uh, nuclear, you know, uh, radionucleotides do take the form of salt, and they would yeah. be contained within the salt crystals. So, yeah, so you get the salt that comes from the, like the Nepalese pink salt, it's expensive, but it does come from the mountains, it's very ancient. So right. You have to get, uh, you know, um, a salt that's sourced from mountains, very old sources, rather than new sea salt, you yeah. know. Yeah, anything from the ocean is very bad. And just confirming what da uh, Dana was saying about the shrimp up north, exactly, exactly. Uh, my findings on the coast here, uh, these deaths, these mass deaths of red crabs, you know, the Langa Steelers, they look like little lobsters. Uh, huge uh, uh, kill-offs occurred down in San Diego this last week. So the, the, all, everything, all the crustaceans are getting wiped out because, you know, they filter a lot through their gills. You know, they filter... Uh, they filter algae through their gills, and the algae's killing them. So it's uh, it, it makes total sense. In other words, these are not isolated. Events. The entire Pacific is affected. You know, there's a marine, there's a collapse of marine life in the Pacific going on. As far as we can see, at least all the way down to uh, you know, the middle, uh, the middle of the Chilean coast. There, at least that far down, there's a kill off going on. All the way down there. Okay. Well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So much That's for running to uh, the southern hemisphere for safety. Well, unless you're willing to go down there by the, you know, was it Terra de Fuego? You know, it's pretty cold down there. It's pretty hard down there. Yeah. Beautiful, but hard. Yeah. Well, you, no, well, you get no, off the you you get it. off the coastline. Ultimately, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, you have to get off. Yeah, yeah. going to have to get off the far coastline in the mountains because it's coming at your Two different venues, yeah. right? Uh, to the jet streams, you can't avoid it, but the ocean, you can, so yeah. to speak, the moisture yeah. and the fog and everything yeah. else. Yeah. But so the 200 miles in land. The clouds, and then you got that problem yes. inland. And our problem now in California, I know there's a lot of smoke in the morning. All these fires uh, have basically, you got radioactive scrub up there in trees, you know, from past Fukushima. See, nobody, talk, nobody would ever talk about that except uh, us. We know. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We had the San Onofre, Diablo Canyon. Uh, so we basically um, have, and then uh, Fukushima, of course, all the trees. And, Five and, years uh, of uh, rains, a lot of which yeah, are yeah, certainly carrying melt, melt. radioactive material, which goes into yeah. the ground, it goes up into the foliage, it's there, and it burns. Yeah. Yeah, it burns. So we're getting both carbon particulates, you know, which are not very good for your lungs. You know, little black particles, of carbon that you can't see. You just breathe in, lying your lungs. But it's, it's carrying a lot of, you know, how carbon, you know, what charcoal does. It absorbs radionucleotides and salt. So you're getting a lot of, uh, you know, radioactive salts, you know, the cesium, strontiums, and everything else in the air coming in that carbon right into your lungs because of these fires. We've had, what, about 20 fires across California this season. Many of them still burning. Yeah. I, and when I walked up on the morning, I could see the smoke out there. You yeah. can see it in the morning. Uh, right. When the sun comes up, of course, uh, you can't see it so well, but in the early morning, you can definitely see the smoke. We have the same thing uh, here that uh, Dana's been reporting on up there. The people are being sacrificed, the same as in Fukushima, the same as in Japan. Uh, people are not being taken care of. The governments have completely abandoned them. And I, mm -hmm. has anyone up there beside you, Dana, stepped stepped forward to talk about the dangers and the, the massive changes in the ecosystem up there? Has anyone said anything? Anybody? I can't find anybody. See, that makes me sick. Well, talk about dereliction of duty as a human being. Uh, we're still waiting for Operation Kelp Watch uh, to publish its <laughs> results. <laughs> I think we got a long way to head. You beat them to death out that first time. <laughs> they, they, they came up with the results, right? That was Vetter, Carl Vetter, I guess. He, well, why go through with the test? Maybe they just dropped the test <laughs> after he announced the results before they started. I mean, that, hey, that's there's a new IAEA handbook that helps doctors deal with the social aspects of nuclear and radiological accidents. And so it's about psychological issues. <laughs> So teach the doctor when someone comes in and says they're worried about being living next to a nuclear plant because all this smoke. 
yeah. came through to the community. Everybody got sick. Oh, that's all in your head. Here's some psychotropic uh, drugs and have a nice day. Oh, yeah, give them some antidepressants. That's scary. Go away. Yeah. That's scary. Is that they're at the IAEA, that they're doing whoever that? that is. That's a, a hundred people, right? The hundred experts. And that's what they got there. They got a hundred experts at that place there. And uh, this is not as scary as Australia. Yoshi, did you catch what they're doing in Australia? They got 50 yeah. people from the community. And they're, they're got 7000 bucks for each head, basically, what they're going to spend on them. And they're going to crash course them for four days on nuclear. And then mm-hmm. later, they're going to have a commission of 350 people, including them. And they're going to make mm-hmm. the same kind of normal people, everyday people. Now, mm-hmm. they don't know nothing about nuclear. And so they brought right. in all the experts on nuclear, all the apologists, and they're going to feed them that. Yeah. Meanwhile, the activists are kept at bay with police on horses. So here's the yeah. activist who actually knows the issue. They, like right now, the activist is right. like, <laughs> it's a bad word. Uh-huh. But in reality, the yeah. activist is the person who really studied that subject, all the pieces, and is involved in it, and has a personal stake most likely. So well, Australia the is, is going to use bu- 50 buying a lot of the activists. Tom is like a banana. Yeah, and the the industry is the industry's buying or renting these activists now. Many of them are selling out. You know, there's been a whole bunch of them who've gone over. And other, the industry also creates activists. These sort of new type environmentalists who support nuclear, they're, they're stamping them so. out now. You know, they're, they're pushing them out. So they're trying to dominate the activist market and say, well, this activist says this, this activist says that. So you've got to be very careful about this, too, on the ground. You know, that there'll be competition saying quite different stuff and competing for the same dollar song. And somehow they'll get a, a lot of money and resources. So there's a huge push there. This is really sort of sinister what's happening. You know, there's a lot of money behind the regeneration of nuclear power. They don't care about the health issues. They only see economic advantage. And if uh, Fukushima and Diablo Canyon kill a lot of people, all the better. (laughs) All the better. And we're heading that way in a hurry. You know, why is Australia taking the nuclear waste back? Should China take back all their TVs? Yeah, you know, when like should Walmart take back all the toys? So they can sell America uranium, take back all our diapers when we're finished with them. Yeah, and yeah. Well, but the, the idea is that 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 way their customers will continue buying as long as they, they're not going to take back all the nuclear waste. They just have to make the motions. Okay. Oh, we're going to have a repository here. It's going to take a long time to fill up, but we'll take a few rods, yeah, good and then they can, they can ship over tons of uranium, right? In the end, they'll say, well, it didn't work out, we're sorry, but those tons of uranium will be sold. This is, uh, it's a scam. It's a massive scam. Uh, uh, you know, South, it's basically the South Australia uh, Mining Bureau, apparently, is really, really active in this. Although uranium comes from the north, I don't understand why they're so gung-ho on nuclear in the south. And that's a warning sign. Maybe they have discovered uranium deposits in South Australia. I don't know. But yeah, they, they, they got 33 percent of the world's uranium, Australia. Yeah. Oh, Canada is, I think, one of the major players, right? Canada, yeah, we are Australia, and Kazakhstan. Canada deserves someone like me. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we yeah. owe the world someone like me real bad. In Australia, we need someone yeah. from Australia just like us. That come out and get in their faces. And they are. They were down there. They were in their faces. They were outside. Yeah. And these were just like... Middle-aged people, very yeah. pleasant-looking people with little signs, little tiny signs. I guess they got a limit on how big the signs are down there. Mm-hmm. And so they, and they got these great big Clydesdale horses pooping everywhere and to keep the activists who actually know what's going on away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and all, wow. like it's, so they're going to bring in all the apologists and brainwash people. And then that's what you do everywhere. But I mean... That's one we can pick apart. At least we can get at them for doing that. That's the only way I see it. And you know, the fact, you're, you're talking about accountability here. And, and in Japan, TEPCO, bald-faced liars, have finally admitted that they lied about the meltdowns, the reactor meltdown. They lied. They covered it up. They lied. There's no one's going to do. No one's going to do anything. Nothing's going to happen to yeah. them. There's Nothing. There's no court case. There's no arrest. There's no. There's no. Well, you can't take a no court yeah. They got corporate person. Like Mark Zuckerberg that's, that's can't right. go to jail or get a criminal yeah. record at Facebook. No, he's Facebook. too big to jail. Yeah. He gets a fine. Yeah. Not him, but Facebook. But if we done the same thing, we hack people, stole their data, we go to jail. They extradite us to other countries so they can put us in them jails too. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Well, I mean look at uh look at look at our career 
criminal political elite in this country. The same in Japan. It's the same in Canada. Yeah. But here, it's so egregious. Uh, Hillary Clinton is a, a essentially a lifelong member of this criminal elite political cartel. Yeah. And she yeah. will, they will not indict her, at least not yet. And I've said it on the program. If she is yeah. not indicted, the FBI director, James Comey, should immediately quit, resign in disgrace, yeah. uh, and, and go public. Yeah. I mean, this well, is really know, outrageous. Uh, she didn't even have a password on her private email server with above top secret material on it. And Obama knew he's implicated. Is there two emails at least that we found that he answered her on that server? So it, it, these people are well, all well, criminals. Yeah, they're, they're immune. You, know, you, you remember uh, um, uh, Sherman Skolnick, that great investigator. Uh, Sherman was on this Sherman, program yeah. almost a hundred times. Yeah, and he he he, he showed he illustrated how corrupt the judges of Chicago were, the federal judges and the state judges, and. Uh, how they were bought, and as, as I looked into this Pritzker case, uh, the this Secretary of Commerce, Penny Pritzker, was the CEO of Superior Bank of Chicago, which ripped off all the investors uh, who uh, did a RICO charge. That's organized organized crime charge against her. They accused her of being part of an organized crime. This is the Pritzker family. It's our Secretary of Commerce, okay? Yeah. And uh, it was a subprime. That bank collapsed because of a, their subprime loans to the housing market in Chicago. This was like 10 years before the sub, or uh, six years before the subprime uh, crisis uh, nationally broke out. And uh, so if, if Hillary's getting away with everything, it's because the judges are blind. You know, it's well, not the court system it needs to be broomed out, vacuumed. I, it's you know, gone. And they're, they're not elected. They're not elected officials. No, they're all, these are all political hacks, political appointees. I wish any yeah. of you who are members of the archives uh, at Rents, go back and listen to a couple of Sherman Skolnick programs, S-K-O-L-N-I-C-K. Sherman was a, a, a heroic individual, uh, had polio, was defined, confined to a wheelchair, uh, great journalist, a great reporter, and just he knew Chicago inside and out. And I honestly think that the infection he got, uh, and it was termed to be untreatable, maybe it was MRSA, I don't know. I knew Sherman really well, but he got sick when I was, uh, he was unfortunately out of touch. I could have maybe helped him, but I think he might have been removed because this is when the Obama Rahm Emanuel team was coming in. Sherman knew everything about Chicago. He would have been an intolerable pain in their ass. So I, I, I don't know. Anyway, great man. I'm glad you remembered him and thanks for yeah. mentioning his name. Well, we can only hope now with Brexit that Boris Johnson, you know, the, uh, he was sort of one of the insurgent leaders, uh, Farage, uh, uh, this, uh, Nigel Farage, and, uh, yeah. uh, also Jeremy Corbyn, who has, uh, you well, know, Well, they're trying to get rid of uh, Corbyn. His the globalists are trying to get rid of all these three guys. Yeah. You know, the, Nigel, the Nigel Farage, uh, Jer yeah. Jeremy Corbyn is targeted. His brother, yeah. uh, Piers Corbyn, was, has been on this yeah. program in the past. He's a great climatologist, okay. meteorologist. Yeah. Yeah. He was, yeah. in fact, he's on right now. You can find it. Uh, yeah. A video of him talking about how they're trying to get rid of his brother. So, yeah. 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 yeah so, the, so we got to hope that they can stick together regardless of their political you know, differences on the you know, political spectrum and finally take on this nuclear uh, takeover of, uh, of England. You know, the, all the English system is now owned by the French, the Japanese, <laughs> and the Spanish. You know, and uh, it's just it's an outrage that English people are subject, they're held hostage by this nuclear industry. And England is massively radioactive if you look at any kind of radioactivity maps. The Sellafield disaster is, uh, again, one of those things that uh, we may hear more about it over here than the English people do over there. What's going on in, uh, in your government in Canada with this Trudeau guy? What's your take? Same old, same old. By the way, you mentioned Boris Johnson real quick, Yoshi. Uh, did you see the picture of Boris in his yarmulke at the Wailing Wall <laughs> paying his oh, no, respects? I've never seen that. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, well, even double may be there soon. You know, I mean, it's sad, but, you know, you got to... It's called a know, political expediency. You got to pay yeah, the price. Do what one has to do to at least do the principal thing. You still have to, you yeah. know, uh, shake hands and kiss babies, that sort of thing, right? Well, they, they'll, they'll kill you if you don't. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It's you the way it is. You have a few friends over there. You know, it's just reality, yeah. yeah. And I think his statement about... Uh, Palestine was again a political uh, expediency. I wouldn't yeah. worry too much. He can change his mind yeah. later, but yeah. right now he's yeah. got to play the game. So let's give him the benefit yeah. of the doubt. Yeah. So yeah. Dana, tell us more about this young Trudeau character. Yeah, born with a silver spoon in his yeah. mouth. Where? His dad, in his mouth. He I used say. To run the country. <laughs> And he, he, a couple of years ago, he started going out and doing lectures at 300,000 a pop. 300K a pop? Account. Wow. Yeah, in Canada. All the universities, wherever he showed up, have to give him a couple of That's more than we get, isn't it? I think, yeah. Yeah, per hour. <laughs> He's the Hillary Clinton we didn't know about. Uh, but not in that context. Uh, this is an Ivory League a golden hair child that grew up extraordinarily privileged and part of the good old boys club and so he's selling weapons munitions and everything else left right and center to the Saudis and anybody else that wants them and he he is um, the furthest thing you can imagine from a leader he, he had no idea until about two years ago that he was going to be a politician you know he, he was taken out of the crib basically because he's still a child and then put up in the spotlight but they gave him all this money and of course if, you, if I was given 300,000 every time I went in for a lecture I'd probably feel pretty impressive, you know. <laughs> and I think anybody else would have that problem. And so that's what they done when it was they built him up psychologically and then they have that it's just that political So the Zionists uh, still run Canada. Yeah, same, same, breeding. same crew. Right. Mongrelized yeah. at this stage, yeah. Yeah. Mongrels. Yeah. <laughs> He's a mongrel. Uh Canada's in trouble. We got uh, twenty reactors here in Ontario. Twenty. That's all the fresh, all the fresh water right there in that one spot. Twenty. I had no idea. Twenty. That's right running. there in Ontario. And wow. Yeah, they're rebuilding uh, three there at Pickering, and they're going to spend roughly ten billion on each one of those. Uh, and but you know these are I consider a lot of this posturing, uh, all these new uh, narratives we hear about it. I consider it posturing because you can't get away from the dead of the Pacific. And you can't get away from the impact, uh, that we're, we're right, at, we're the next in line to be show that major impact. Right. Everything else is showing it. And we're still on, unfortunately, you know, my prediction of the end of it all by the end of this year for the Pacific life is, is ringing so true. That's why I'm forcing myself out there on the ocean in one sense to visually hoping to see any life. And like I treasure every little speck I could find out there now. It's really weird, but, uh, it's not there. And so, well, when you go out and you don't see birds, you, the, the, really the so birds are the most it. visible aspect of the food chain. They fly around, you see them, okay? They eat fish. I'm looking, for. I'm looking for feathers at this stage. And, wow. Because uh, you know, there's no trails. But, uh, uh, the insects are and everything else. I'm going to go and do a real expedition for two or three weeks coming up next month, I guess, or something. Uh, just to, the final expedition. I'll be the insects, the insects this months. summer. When the trial is over, I'll move off the coastline right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gone. It's too silent now. It's spooky at this stage. And, I'm about a uh, hundred miles inland, with three, four, five thousand foot mountains all the way. I'm going to the other side of the Rockies. <coughs> right you away. are. Uh, yeah. yeah, but you better not go downwind. Atlantic. You got to look at your nuclear power plants. Right, I'm going towards the Atlantic. Um, and not, there, there's spots down there or get out of Canada, one or the other. So it's better to be as far as away from the Pacific as I can get. And, and then I gotta, I gotta watch over because I got 20 nuclear plants, plants in Ontario, central Canada, and that all mm -hmm. runs towards the Atlantic. Right. Right. Yeah. And then all the runoffs on the east side of the Rocky Mountains go towards the Atlantic and the Gulf. Right. Yeah. And so it's a perpetual machine. You can't really escape it, but to live in that haze that comes off the Pacific and the direct, because the, the clouds coming in are heavy. They hit the Rocky Mountains. They lose their payloads. And the majority of that will wash back down towards the coastline. And that's just a cycle of life, right? And so it's, it's better to be on the other side of the Rocky well, In this Mountains. case, it's a cycle of death. The cycle of death is true. And like we were talking about last time, where there's uh, mortality that they want to admit to. They say the animals are migrating, the beak animals away. Oh, please. 
right what, what's the latest on that? The ponds are still there. The, the grass is still there. The <laughs> but they migrated. I see. Well, like we've seen in Chernobyl, the biota, the life itself is missing. Yeah. yeah. And so they might recognize that and look for something that they're familiar with. And, and who knows? That could be some truth to it. But I would imagine because they're eating all the stuff as it's coming back up. They're munching on that stuff all day long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then the manifestations of radiation take them out of the chain. Well, just like everything else is now missing. So it's missing. The whole coastline is missing. And not one documentary on TV, uh, nothing. So you put yours together, and it uh, if you can get Redford... Uh, any other film festival that is environmentally oriented, and some of them, some of them may be. Try. I would reach out to Redford. I would send him a note, and uh, yeah. maybe, oh, maybe he'll get some help. Maybe he'll say, "All right, this is enough." Somebody. That's what I'm expecting to happen. I'm not counting on it, but I'm yeah, not it, expecting. I'm hoping somebody. I would about. reach out. I, I would start reaching out, and it's uh, going to drag me into the misery I'm living in, and allow yeah. this to happen properly. And put me up on a pedestal in one sense or something, right? I can't stand the fact that we've done what we've done, and we're not we're not getting any any traction. We have so spent we're not having any conversations for over five years uh, on this so program. Have a conversation, yeah. Yoshi. Exactly. Honestly, what have we accomplished in five years as far as waking up the people? We've informed well, a lot San of people. Down. We documented it anyway. Just, uh, yeah. San Onofre is down. You know, they shut it down. Uh, Maybe Diablo uh, is, Canyon. is yeah, an extension I mean, we, we, of... We can't, we, yeah, we can't say nothing has happened, you know. I think there is a split in the environmental movement where, the, the again, this thing, the, the new environmentalists pro-nuclear, they right. broke away because they're being rejected by the mainstream environmental movement. So, you know, this thing is such a caricature of itself that, you know, I mean, very establishment environmentalists are getting a little bit beat with a nuclear lobbyist. So I think we've got to keep going. Uh, what Dana's saying is that St. Lawrence Seaway is the key thing there. It's, a, it's Cancer Alley. And uh, Pritzker's people, they were she was just there in Illinois uh, lobbying to keep the six nuclear plants there from being shut down. They're all hitting their 40-year-old area. That's her hometown there, you know, Chicago. It, it, They're trying to keep crazy. that point. Absolutely crazy. Yeah, so, so basically, we're, you know, the plants are coming 40 years, shutdown time, okay? Yeah. And the battle is on, you know, uh, to extend that or to put in uh, new plants. And so I think, you know, we've got to keep going. You know, we don't, I mean, well, we can't quit now, obviously, because, you know. Oh, no, 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 that'll never the pressure happen. pressure is on with all these plants aging, and we've got to just keep pushing for total shutdown. And Fukushima remains the story and get the truth out about the real effects of it. Uh, the real uh, toll and injuries and probably a much higher death toll than anyone's talking about and challenge these guys because they're floating on a cloud of lies. It's all lies that uh, they can do. It. Oh, Fukushima had no effect. It yeah. was smaller than Chernobyl. There was no explosion. All lies. And so we have to keep pushing hard. And and I agree. Dana should look for funding from Sundance or wherever he can, you know. Yeah, uh, definitely. definitely. Yeah, yeah. And uh, even the Canadian Film Fund or something, they've got to give something to the other side because unlike the U.S. foundations, which are so privatized with, well, you know, owned by families which are heavily invested in nuclear power, the Canadian government, yeah, they make money from uranium, but they still, it's not a direct investment sort of thing, you know. I mean, the, the public still has a voice if you if he gets the letters of support and all that, uh, there's a shot. I think there's a shot in Canada that is would be very, very difficult to do in the United States or Japan. Obviously. I'd say impossible. You know, let's, yeah, let's hope. Impossible, basically. But uh, yeah, de- yeah. definitely. I mean, uh, film on nuclear is called Pandora's Promise, made in 2013 by a British filmmaker. And that one was also funded by the same Pritzker girl, you know, Rebecca Pritzker. She financed that. Again. So, wow. And that's the biggest film. Right after, that, right She's after two brutal. years, after, right after Fukushima, she put her money right into making a film about this, a documentary. So it's the money, I mean, the money is there for pro nuclear people. It's not there for us, but we got to so. find new ways. It's really tough, but we got to keep doing it. Yeah, well, we need people to come to reality and understand that this is, is, is going to blow up in their faces over the next couple of years at tops. 
It's, it's already yeah. blown up in the face of the Pacific. Dana, uh, if, you, if we're running out of time here, but I really yeah. urge you to send off uh, an email to Sundance. Uh, you know, use use uh, what you've done, uh, your site. Use the program. Mention Yoshi. Mention me. Whatever you want to do, uh, and say this is the biggest story on the planet that has not been touched. And, and can point. you can That'll you get that. some point? I'll try. I'll try that one for sure. Just knock out a, a quick email. All right. Yeah, you know, there needs to be a rebuttal to uh, Pandora's promise. There needs to be a rebuttal of that piece of propaganda. Perfect. So, I'll, work, uh, I'll work on that one. Please. Very yeah. good. Very good. All right, <laughs> Dana, you take care. We'll talk That's to you next good. week. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks. Hey, Yoshi. Okay, have a good one. All right, uh, Yoshi, you're still right. in, you're in SoCal. You're headed yeah, back to yeah, Asia. Yeah, I'm headed back to Asia soon, so we'll see if I can get a phone line there. My phone's probably disconnected, so but I'll check it out. I'll let you know. All right, All you right? take care, huh? Okay, All right. very good then. All right, Thanks. bye-bye. Okay, here we go. Monday. That's a... Three hours, and we'll be back tomorrow night to offer you three more hours. Terrible Tim Refat will be back tomorrow night. He has been released by British authorities who abducted him right before his last scheduled visit on this program on the 14th, and uh, he'll have quite a story to tell. Dr. Leonard Colwell will be here tomorrow night as well, and I think Frosty Woldridge, although he may still be on a bike ride, but we have... uh, plenty to talk about tomorrow night. Hope you'll be here. Take care and we will talk then.